Okay, I want to talk about uh, business in the Philippines. Now, I'll start, start with the call centers. Um, I'll go on the other ones in other videos. First thing is, call center industry is predominantly telemarketing. And the problem with that is it's the worst of the worst as, as far as I'm concerned. It's a bit of, it's a horrible industry to be in. It's one where most of the time people are telling you F off and everything all day long. Um, they hate you. So it's not a good industry to be in. But then you've got the problems where there's no loyalty between people. There's no loyalty between companies. People don't generally work together. Um, and what you find is the IT guys will sell data between call centers. I've had somebody accuse me of um, stealing a contract, but the contract was not exclusive anyway. But that's not how I gained the contract anyway. I, went, I was actually direct with a company. But the, the fact is, there's a lot of bitterness between different call centers. Um, and they poach constantly from each other. Or try to, and you'll get people praise it up. And you, you'll find a guy on YouTube. If you look up C to Boo call centres, you find this guy saying how great his business is and everything. But I know people that work there, do work there, um, and I do have people that will sell uh, his stuff to me if I wanted it. But the fact is, most of the people are running the same contracts anyway. It's one of the reasons we decided we're moving away from that industry. We don't like it. Um, they do play call centers off each other uh, but also you find people don't get the right prices I was getting hundred dollars a lead for solar and I know other people that were getting 20 um, on merchant accounts and I was offered 150 plus a percentage of every sale so I get 150 commission plus a percentage of every sale where other people were getting 16 to 19 dollars because a lot of the call centers are desperate for the work. But the problem is, a lot of the people they're, they're buying from are brokers. The, the Pakistanis and Indians mainly, um, that are sitting as go-betweens. Um, they worked in the call center industry for a few years already. They already know the system, they already stole their client list, they already know which call centers are using who. And basically they try and broker deals cheaper. They, They'll often lie that they have call centers to clients and then they'll broker it out to 10, 20 call centers all in a low rate. For like I was saying earlier, I was getting 100, uh, well, 70 to 100 a lead for solar. Um, if it was an actual closed deal, it was 140. But I know other people that were getting 35. Um, when we first started, we got 35 and I mo quickly moved away for that within a couple of weeks. Uh, once I knew what was going on with the person I was dealing with. Um, they just steal. Um, and okay, you know, might, people might say, well, people will work for what they can afford. Well, the fact is, a lot of this they can't afford. But that's why I would say for call center businesses, I would go direct. I would speak to somebody like myself who already got a network of call centers. And it's very obvious so I would be brokering a deal because I'm sat in Spain. I'm not sat in the Philippines. But I could actually give you the direct contacts of, I don't know, maybe five to five to seven thousand agents. I can give you access to a lot of people, um, purely because people that know me and trust me in the industry. Um, but at the same time, it's what needs to happen. Really, you need to have people that you can trust and work with, and start moving away from these brokers. Because they're, they're a cancer on the industry. They really are. Because what happens is, you're, you're expecting a lead that you're paying good money for. Um, and what's happening is the, the broker's taking at least 50%, uh, which leaves the call centre no money for good data, no money for um, training, and a lot of time no money to actually function. They're, they're running nearly um, on broke because give them a couple of months of running these contracts because the other thing you'll get with these brokers is they'll run it over um, a guy I was dealing with he quickly found out the guy was Pakistani he quickly found out he was lying about everything he was talking about 
he was getting paid on a Tuesday, but he was trying to drag it out to a fortnight. That oh, I haven't been paid. It's this, it's this. Fact was, what he does, he runs up debts with call centres. Then he'll swap to another call centre. Um, he's still doing it now. Um, he goes by the name of Sean Peterson. You can probably find him on LinkedIn still. But the fact is, it, he's basically just abusing um, the call centre industry, running up debt on other people's call centres, then disappearing with the cash. The same happened with uh, a guy I was working with before. He's done the same. A uh, guy, guy in New York. He, he's he's been not paying people recently. He's got into some bad habits. He still owes me about four thousand dollars. But that is part and parcel of the call center industry. It is a bit like that. Um, but one of the reasons I'm moving away from the the telesales market is because it, it's just disgusting. You know, I find it a vulgar business when it's set up like this. If you if people don't play ball with a real business, there's no point wanting to be in it. It's not an industry I'm enjoying. Um, so that's the telesales market.